knowledge is power today i'm going to tell you what not to believe with regards to smartphone marketing smartphone companies spend a ton on marketing and they want their latest and greatest to be drilled into your head so that it becomes an object of desire for you if you want more tips and tricks like these please do hit the like and subscribe button it really helps Let's start with peak brightness. Smartphone companies tell you that the latest smartphone has 1800, 2000 nits of brightness. What does that exactly mean? If you increase the brightness slider all the way to the max, does it hit peak brightness? No, 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 it does not. That's just the typical brightness. Peak brightness is when you're outdoors on a bright and sunny day. Your smartphone recognizes that you're on a bright environment and it really boosts the screen's white balances and blows it out of proportion so that it's clear and visible to you but that also for a short period of time it cannot maintain that peak brightness for long duration as the device will overheat so instead of looking for peak brightness look for typical brightness that's the brightness that you will be using more often next let's talk about waterproof you must have heard this before your smartphone is ip this rated ip that rated you can go swimming with it in a pool you can go deep sea diving well no you can't Don't get me wrong. Yes, you can go swimming with your smartphone. I have done it in the past, but it's at your own risk. Even though the company states that the smartphone is waterproof, if your phone gets damaged due to liquid, like if your SIM tray is left open or if you drop it into a swimming pool and it hits the bottom hard, if there is liquid damage, you will not get it covered under warranty. All these smartphones have a liquid sensor inside which turns red as soon as it senses moisture. and when they open up your phone and they see that sensor is red they are not going to cover you under warranty trust me there have been a lot of people going and fighting this with the companies they have a long list of terms and conditions where it says that is just a splash proof and it's not supposed to be in that environment for long durations of time so if you go swimming with your latest iphone for a long duration of time and water does enter it you're out of luck it's not going to be covered by warranty next let's talk about charging speed Don't look for the highest charging speeds like 80 watts, 100 watts, or 120 watts. You must have heard terms like dash charger, or super book charger, etc., etc. Don't look for that. Look for the time instead. So if it says that your smartphone can get charged in 10 minutes from 0 to 50, that's something that you need to focus on. So speeds like 100, 120, 80 watts, etc. It's not the constant charging speed that you will get. During the charge cycle, it will hit that charging speed. Like if a 120 watt charging speed is there, it will hit 120 watts at a certain level. But after that, it will slowly and gradually keep reducing it, and the charging speed will slow down. This is because the battery overheats and it cannot sustain such high speed charging. Now, you also must have noticed that companies like Samsung, Apple, they don't provide crazy fast charging speeds. That's because fast charging is really bad for your battery and overall the battery life will reduce. Samsung and Apple are well established companies and they don't need to really, you know, focus on the charging speeds whereas other companies that are struggling and they want to make an impact in the market, they use fast charging as a point for marketing and that helps them make their sales. So there are a lot of people that do want the fast charging and uh, that's absolutely fine but just remember fast charging will not lead to longer battery life so keep that in mind next let's talk about camera camera is by far the main focal point for all smartphone companies and their marketing campaigns they will come up with things like seven lenses in one 120 mm support 200 times zoom you can click the moon why why would you want to click the moon But yeah that's what the companies will focus on and they will focus on it heavily. But understand one thing having the latest gear does not make you an amazing photographer or a videographer. If you don't understand lighting, framing, composition and just some sort of basic editing skills your photos are not going to look great even if you have the latest tech in your hand. Yes it is true that with the latest gear you will be able to click great pictures but it also depends on your lighting your framing your composition and editing skills so instead of upgrading your phone every single year and shelling out tons of money on it i suggest that you should instead 
level up your skill understand lighting better understand framing and composition better there are a ton of apps out there that help you edit i use snapseed it's amazing and i also have friends that are using three to four year old phones and their photos and videos are thousand times better than people who are carrying the latest s23 ultra or the 15 pro max so don't really focus on getting the latest gear level up your skill instead Next, let's talk about performance. In every smartphone launch, they are 100% going to talk about the new processor that they're using. They're going to talk about the latest Snapdragon processor or in Apple's case, the new Bionic chip or the Pro chip or the new 3 nanometer chip. But what does that really mean for the average Joe out there? What do you use your smartphone for? You use it for calling, for texting, for checking social media, for playing games like PUBG or Call of Duty or like some Candy Crush games, etc. Or maybe you can do some light work on it or maybe open an Excel sheet or read a PDF. That's generally what the masses do out there. And even a normal 20,000, 15,000 rupee phone will easily accomplish all of these tasks. Until and unless you're into creating media where you rely heavily on taking videos and editing videos and exporting them for all social media, then of course the latest and greatest processor does make sense. But for the general masses out there, don't focus too heavily on what the chip is, how fast is the processor, because you're not really going to be utilizing 100% of it anyways. So these are a few of the topics that I wanted to talk on and I wanted to educate you so that you don't get fooled by all the marketing hype. Now just try and understand that when you're purchasing a smartphone, you're spending your hard earned money. And instead of just going for the flashiest device out there, you can be a little practical and think about what exactly you need and whether you actually need the fastest processor, whether it really impacts your life that much. Well, by going through all the topics that I have spoken about today, I hope that it will help you make your decision easier and you don't have to go broke in the process of buying the latest and greatest tech. Please do subscribe to my channel. It really helps with the algorithm and also hit the like button. See you in the next one.